So in the last video, I made this glide bait, carved it out of wood, made it. And today I'm going to be making some molds of this glide bait so I can make a bunch of resin copies of it. So check out that catfish. I already made a mold of the front half, did it off camera. This was my first time making a mold. So we have a mold of the front half. Looks pretty good. Now it is time to make the mold for the back half. And I figured I would show y'all exactly how I'm going to do this. It's pretty easy. Just need a few supplies. The piece you're molding, some mold maker. Then you're going to need some wood to make a box. I just got this piece of flat wood. I cut it into sec sections like this, super glued, and baking soda it to a square like this. No screws, no nails, just super glued baking soda. Real simple. I drew a mark inside the box. That tells me the halfway mark. And then you need some clay duct tape as well. And then some petroleum jelly. So that's all you need. So first thing you're going to do is take your box and your duct tape and you want to cover a side. Doesn't have to be pretty. Do some cross hatches here. All right, so we got our box. One side is covered in duct tape. And now I'm going to fill half of this box up with the clay. I'm using a spoon just to scoop it out and smooth it out. Works pretty good. So again, this is why I added that line inside the box so I can just kind of see where halfway is and use that line as a straight line to fill up the box. And I'm just gonna try to get this as smooth as possible. It doesn't matter too much. I'm actually gonna scoop some of this out and throw it in the corners. Because next up I need to scoop out the middle where the lure is gonna sit. Center my lure in the box and kind of trace around it with a spoon. So I want half of the lure to be sticking out and half of the lure to be buried. I'm just gonna push my lure into the clay. Okay, so now we got this and you can see all the little cracks and gaps in between the lure. I need to make all the clay flush around the lure, making it touch the lure so it has a nice seal. I need to make some air pocket holes. I got this piece of cut paintbrush here. I'm going to stick this. And I need to make one more for back here. You can also use a toothpick for this, but I'm just using a, a paintbrush. All right, and the last thing we need is a pocket for the pour in spout. So I'm gonna get a little piece of clay and make that. Next up, I'm gonna take a drill bit and drill four little holes maybe about a quarter inch deep. And that is our mold. And again, this is one to one mix ratio. So really easy to do. And then just stir all that together. You have an eight minute working time with this specific brand. Just gonna mix all that together. And you just wanna mix it until all the swirls are gone. So for the first part, I pour a very thin layer over the lure. Very, very thin. And also hold it kinda high up and make sure it drops really small. That is because of the air bubbles. So for this first layer, a really, really thin pour over the lure and that way all the air bubbles can pop and just let that sit there too. A very thin pour like this will pop all the air bubbles and then doing a thin layer over the lure like this will let all the air bubbles that did survive come up. So I'm gonna actually show you all this. I don't know if you guys can see it but there's little tiny air bubbles popping on the surface. There you can kind of see it right there. So those bubbles are popping, they're rising up and rising to the surface and popping. That is what you want to see. You want to get all those bubbles out. 
if I poured a deep layer of the mold maker, then those bubbles have farther distance to travel up and most of the times they won't make it out. So I may need to make, get some more mold maker, man. Might not have enough. It's not good. All right, so this has hardened. So now what we do is flip it over and take off the duct tape. And take out all the clay. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take this out and wash it under the sink so I can get all the clay off of this side of the lure. And then also wipe this down with a rag as well. So here is the mold after it's all cleaned. You can see the fins and you can see where I drilled out the holes for the line ties and the hinges and whatnot. I wanted those to be made in the mold so I don't have to precisely drill the hole every time. The hole will already be there or the start of the hole will be and I can just easily drill those out without having to measure them every time and all that fun stuff. This one's a little long, I'm gonna cut that one down, but that's the first half of the mold. Now I need to stick this back in and then get the petroleum jelly and rub a thin layer all over the mold. That way, whenever I pour the next layer of silicone, it will not stick to the bottom layer. Stick this piece back in. This time we can go ahead and pour all of our mold maker. If you have like a vacuum sealer or a pressure cooker, definitely use it to get rid of all the bubbles. But if you don't have one, just do it the way I'm doing it and it'll be all right. It won't be too bad to where it's not unusable. Should be able to fix any air bubbles you get, but a pressure cooker will definitely help out with the bubbles if you have one. I don't have one, so. All right, I got both sides poured. It is done. I'm going to peel this off the wood best I can take the mold out and then we will see how we did some people build their boxes where one side is screwed in so they can take one side off but it's not necessary all right there's our pour spout just want to check it all out before we open it all right we got a little bit of flashing here on the fin I can cut that off and it came out pretty freaking good. I will have to clean up a lot of this flashing. Cut out this piece here where this piece floated out. That piece did not. And just cut up that stuff, cut all this flashing off. Clean up the pour spout, all that good stuff. But it all looks really good. So I'm happy with how this came out. And now we have both the molds for both pieces. Here is the other mold right here for the front end. So now we have molds. Now we can make some baits, which I'm excited about. Next up, we need to pour some lures and make some lures. I cannot wait to get my first lure all set up, but uh, now we can, so let's get started. I'm gonna pour some resin here. We have a two part resin. So this resin is a one-to-one -one mix ratio. So we need the same amount in each cup. I have it marked on the inside. So I have, I just cut a red solo cup, but if you look right inside there, mm -hmm. there's about- Sorry. <laughs> amateur cameraman over here. If you look inside the cup, there's about half an inch mark for I each one. <laughs> Where the phone's <laughs> So we got our two cups. I'm gonna go ahead and mix these and then stir them. And I have about six to eight minutes for this type of resin to harden and cure. So we gotta be kind of quick. This is the headpiece right here. I already poured the tailpiece off camera, which is right here. Came out looking pretty good. But yeah, it looks sick. I wanted to show. This is starting to heat up already, so we gotta pour. Ready, babe? Wait, it's yep. heating up. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Oh. Uh, 
There we go. She's full. All right, it is time to demold. Let's take it apart, see how it looks. Again, here's the tail. I did add a little bit of the filler and a few spots just to clean it up. Wow. Wow. All right. All right, I just need to cut this off. Again, on my next mold, I'm not gonna make this as big. Uh, first time making one. The, definitely does not need to be this big. But uh, just need to cut this off, clean it up a little bit, do some sanding, add a little bit of wood filler right here. There was a bubble that didn't get out of. Oh, that's why. <laughs> I didn't cut that off. You Oops, didn't. my bad. Next time when I cut this off, it won't have this bubble right here. That was where the air's supposed to exit. But it didn't exit because there's a freaking piece of foam right here. Dang it. All right. Now the air can escape and that won't happen. But I can just fill that with wood filler and then sand it down and that will be gone. But looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. So here is our first our first mold. A little bit of sanding and it is gonna look pretty freaking good. After a little bit of cleanup, this looks like this. All right, so here is two pieces all made, finished, weighted perfectly. And now we need to attach it. Get some hinges in here, get those glued in, get the line ties, uh, the hooks and all that good stuff. So uh, let's go ahead and start doing that. Also need to get the tail glued in as well. So I went to Academy and the biggest hooks that they had were the size one Kevin Van Dam Elite treble hooks. So size one, that is the biggest hooks I could get. I don't think they're big enough. Honestly, they might be, but it's all we got for short notice. Uh, <laughs> I can't do nothing about it, but order some, but those will take a few days to get here. So we're gonna be using these size one hooks for now and see how they work. But let's go ahead and get the very first glide bait put together. All right, we got everything made. We got all the hooks attached to the line ties and the rings and all that good stuff. We got the hinges made and the fins. It's go time. Let's go ahead and stick this together. No, ma'am. Get down. Get down, Luna. We got a cat, by the way. Her name is Luna. So, I'm sure she'll be jumping on the table a lot more, but... It's okay. Luna. No, ma'am. Alright, first hinges are in. She is glued together. Has pretty good movement. I think this freaking swim bait is gonna be a beast. Can't freaking word. Freaking beast, man. Ah, okay. Front line tie attached. The last fin, let's get that glued on. All right, we got fins. Now I need to go through with a Dremel and scratch this up. So I got it all attached, but I just wanted to show the original, where we started 
to the very first actual casting. So pretty cool. Pretty freaking cool. I did have to fix a lot of spots up here though on the top, just from air bubbles and whatnot. But got those all filled and fixed. And now it's time to paint it. I want to paint this one like a shad. My very first one's going to be mostly silver and black. All black fins, black tail, silver body, and then all these little scales. Jesus, lost the train of thought. All the scales, all these little lines you see, all the shadows right now that you see will be black. And then the rest of it will be silver. It is time to paint. I'm gonna start off with some black. All black glide bait, that'd be kind of sick. Okay, so we got our black base, and now we need to hit it with some pearlized silver. But I need to hit it at this angle, going this way. That way, behind the scales is all still black. So we got all the silver going. I need to go ahead and paint the fins all black again. And the eye, paint around the eye all black. I made a little template here. It is time to glue on the eyes. And now the tail. Actually, yeah, actually I'm going to clear coat it first before we add the tail. So let's go ahead and get some clear coat. But I went out and got some 30 minute epoxy. Normally I use five minute epoxy on the small lures just to get it done super fast, but there's no way I can cover this guy in five minutes. All right, here is the bait after it is sealed and it looks so freaking good, man. I'm super happy with how this came out. So is Luna. But uh, we need to add the tail, add the hooks, and then we can go out to the lake and go test this guy out. It is a pretty tight fit. All right, so there it is with the tail. I may trim that down some more. I don't know, I kind of like it. I think it looks good. We'll see though, we'll mess with it, but. I need to get this glued on. Drop that right down inside that hole. Hey, quit your shit, Luna. Fucking psychopath. The last piece going on the wooer and it is done. Yeah, freaking buddy. Look at that. That thing is a beast. Freaking beautiful, man. Holy crap. Let's get a final measurement with the tail and all that good stuff. 
We are pushing 10 inches, roughly 10 inch glide bait. Absolutely beautiful. All right, nothing to do now, but head out to the lake and go test it out. I'm going to a little pond, um, which probably doesn't have big bass in it. It might, maybe I could catch like a, a hungry three pounder that might go for this guy, but uh, we'll see. No high hopes at this pond, but I do have very high hopes for this glide bait working very good. So let's go test it out. All right, guys, it is time to bust out the big glide bait. We have an absolutely beautiful day with no wind, which is like the first time we had this in maybe, I don't know, three weeks. But here it is. I don't know how heavy this guy is, but it is big. 10 inch glide bait. And anytime we get to bust out the guide select swim bait stick from Okuma, you know it's gonna be a fun day. So let's bust this out. Oh baby. I've not thrown this swim bait stick in a long time and I am excited for it. We got the Citrix from Okuma as well. Just a absolutely beautiful swim bait setup. If you guys need a swim bait rod, go check out Okuma. The link will be in the description, but the guide select swim bait stick, it's the way to go, man. Absolutely giant glide bait here. Absolutely beautiful, man. Here we go. It is time to test it out for the very first time. I did throw it in the sink and it had the perfect slow sinking in the sink, but we gotta see how it swims, how it glides. I'm so freaking pumped for this, man. Oh boy, it all comes down to this. Yes, it wants to swim. It wants to swim, baby. You see how it's flipping over? We don't want that. Not what we want. I think if we add a little bit more weight to the bottom, just a hair bit of weight, I think we'll be golden. And I won't want to like twirl like that. I mean, it still looks great. It's just not perfect. And I want it to be perfect, dang it. All right, it is. it works sometimes. It works about half the time. So I'm gonna go home and add a little bit more weight to the bottom. And then once I do that, I think it's gonna sit up right and work every time. All right, I'm gonna go home add some weight right in here and then hopefully it should be good after that hopefully it'll stop wanting to flip over and come up and flip so oh uh, more weight it's not gonna be perfect the first time but i'm still super happy with how it is swimming already so not bad for a freaking 10 inch glide bait dude that is sick all right i am back at the pond made a few adjustments to the glide bait but also got a trout rod because I want to catch trout and kind of show you all the comparison of my glide bait compared to the trout in this pond so real quick I'm gonna cast out some trout bait so me having to make adjustments to my lure was expected but it's also a good thing because now I know exactly what I need to do to the future glide baits to make them work perfect the first time so Let's cast out this trout bait and then we will test out our glide bait. Uh, get that out there. Okay. And now it is glide bait time. Made, I added some weight to it and also kind of made the top more buoyant. So we'll see what that does. It already stands right. Yes, let's see. Make a quick cast, short one. That looks so much better, yes. That looks so good. Okay, sweet, we freaking did it. It is perfect now. Well, I wouldn't say perfect, but it looks way better. Yes. So we just needed to add more weight on bottom and a little bit more flotation on the top. And it is perfect. Okay, we did it, I'm happy. All right, so now that it is swimming perfect, we know exactly what to do to the next one. So this one was a test run and we got it working perfect now after a few adjustments. But for the next one, we will know exactly where to put all the weight, how much weight to put, and it will be perfect every time now. I'm so stoked. We have a, a spillway a few hours away from me that I want to take this guy to 
and we will really put this guy to the test and hopefully catch either a big bass or some striper ah oh, dude that swim is so perfect yes dude first try i mean i did have to go make an adjustment but i'm still gonna call it first try because I, all I had to do was add a little bit of weight and it is so perfect. Not bad for my very first glide bait. Not bad for my first big swim bait, glide bait. And not bad for my eighth lure I've ever made in my life. That's so freaking awesome, dude. Stoked, you have no idea. Put a lot of work into this guy and for it to work this good already is amazing. We got it figured out. Dude, ah. Oh. I hope y'all can see it. Y'all probably can't. Where are these dang trout at? Is that, is that on? Do I have one? I might have one. Or it was in grab. Nope, that might be one. It just didn't move the pole. Yep, here we go. We got one, baby. <laughs> All right. Here is the trout. This is actually a decent one for this pond. All right, so real quick, here is the trout compared to the lure. It's actually almost about the same size. About 10 inch trout. Man, that bait will look sick colored in a trout. And I'm gonna do it. We will make one that looks like a trout. I need to quickly get this guy back in the water. All right, thank you, dude. Thanks for playing. There it goes. Freaking beautiful trout, man. Water visibility here is like freaking five inches at most. Again, we also need bigger hooks on this guy. And I think that will also help with it being more balanced. These baits really are that fine tuned where a bigger hook changes quite a bit. Wow. It's a big boy, huh? I like that. It's huge. That's pretty. Look at it. Man, look at that in the sun. Though. It's beautiful, man. It's beautiful. Hold on. A big old bait. Wow. Look at We're going to get some color. shots of it, but we successfully made a like 10 that. inch glide bait. You I like, like that it? Silver. It looks good. It yeah. looks really good in the water. I wish we had clear water because this water looks like poop. Yeah, it does. Can't really see it. So, like I said, this was the test run for this lure, but now that I have it perfected, expect way more color schemes coming for this bait. I plan to make so many of these lures now that I know it works perfect. But guys, I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you could, please subscribe and also leave a like for all the work I put into this lure. But I will catch you in the next video. Peace.